Welcome, friends. Welcome. Today, we're doing a quick and comprehensive god guide on uh, Chera... Cherubis? Charybdis? Ah, one second here. All right, let's see here. Just gonna quickly just, you know, casually. Uh, yeah, man. Mm hmm. Yep. Charybdis. 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 All right, Charybdis. Okay, so it's Charybdis. We're going to start with our quick guide that we'll play just shortly here. If you want to skip to the comprehensive guide, there is a timestamp in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, like the video, and I won't take much more of your time. Let's do it. We are now going to start the quick guide portion of this video. Charybdis is passive. Builds up her Tide Meter as she lands consecutive auto attacks or abilities. As this meter builds up, her attack speed increases and her autos will start to come out faster. The only other thing your passive does is item proc effects or lower in how much damage they do. And you can spend the Tide Meter to amplify your abilities, increasing what they do. Your first ability is called Spiked Shot. You get faster and bigger auto attacks that explode into little spikes when they hit enemy gods, walls, or any structures. Your second ability is Capsize. This is your first ability that you can amplify gaining added bonuses. You can either choose to activate the ability and shoot it out right away to get the base, uh, uh, base bonuses for the ability, or you can press it and wait and let this ability charge, increasing the debuffs that applies to the enemy gods. It it applies a slow and a physical protection strip. This gets stronger if you let it charge to full. It also increases how long that debuff lasts. Your third ability, your escape, Whirlpool form, Charybdis jumps to the ground, becoming this giant sea of teeth. You gain extra movement speed. You are untargetable and unseeable. So literally no one can do anything to you while you're down there. This is your second ability that you can also amplify. If you press the ability again, it lasts longer, you move a little quicker, and it adds a knockback when you come out of the ability. Your ultimate is called the Maw Hungers. This is basically Scylla ult. You're CC immune, you move a little bit quicker. When you use the ability, it will push them along the uh, reticle all the way towards the end of the ability's range, stunning the enemy and doing damage if they're not within an executable range. If they are within the executable range, it will assassinate them, allowing you to reuse the ability again. Now, very quickly, Cribs' combo here. It's very simple. You basically start with your two, applying the debuff, activate your one, start shooting them a little bit, ultimate to try to kill them, and finish the job. And if you want, you could also probably put your Rumpel form somewhere within there. Although it's probably better to hold that, hold on to that, so you can escape if their teammates show up to try to kill you for murdering their teammate. Well, that is the quick guide for Charybdis. Thank you for watching, and if you're sticking around, the comprehensive guide is about to start right now. If you're still hanging in there, thank you. I really appreciate it. We're going to step right into Charybdis's comprehensive guide, starting with her passive Raging Tides. Now, when you land auto attacks on gods, enemy minions, or buffs, your tide meter fills. It is located right above your avatar picture. As you land these auto attacks and this meter builds, your attack speed goes up. The only other thing that you need to know about her passive is that meter can be spent to amplify your second and third ability, and that Charybdis does less damage with item proc effects. Now we're going to quickly go over the stats. The tide attack speed increases up to 10% plus an additional 0.75% per level at max tide. The item damage reduction is 35% and you're building 2% of your tide per basic attack that is landed. Charybdis' first ability is Spiked Shot. This is your main source of clear. This ability does extra damage to minions. When you activate it, your left hand turns into the maw. And there's a lot of reticles there. There's a lot of stuff going on. It looks intimidating, but it's pretty simple. Let me break it down for you step by step. 
One thing to note is this is technically an auto attack. It is shorter in range, but bigger and comes out faster than your regular basics. Additionally, when this ability hits enemy gods, walls, or structures, it explodes into spikes that scatter in different directions. So you have your basic reticle here, and then the spike reticles that show up immediately after. Each of those spikes, when they hit enemy gods or enemy minions, it also builds your tide meter. This is what the ability looks like. Now we're going to quickly go over stats so you know what this ability is doing for you exactly. So at rank 1, you're getting 60% minion damage and at max rank, you're getting 100% with additional physical power scaling. Your split damage is 10 at level 1 and 30 at max rank with additional physical power scaling. And the tide buildup is 2% per hit on the spikes. I almost forgot one important detail with your first ability. On top of doing the extra damage to minion waves, it also shoots through the minions, allowing for some easy poke if you're fighting or boxing a 1v1 in your matches. Moving on to Kribus' second ability, Capsize. Now this is a pretty good ability for an ADC. It's a damn good ability for an ADC. But what would might be without Broken God releases, right? And we all know it's going to get you know, patched eventually. Right, Harez? Right? Anyways, back to the video. When this ability lands, it does damage, it slows, and removes protections. Yeah, it removes protections. Yay. This is your first ability that uses your tide meter. You can either shoot the ability off right away, or you can choose to wait a couple seconds, letting the ability charge, increasing the slow and the damage and how much it's stripping of your protections. That's just wonderful. I'm just going to quickly show you what that looks like. Everywhere in the blue area is where this ability hits. So you can see it starts very small and then builds up over time, consuming my tide meter when it's at full, when I release this ability, applying all the debuffs at a stronger effect. Now we're gonna quickly go over the stats so you know what it's like when you don't charge it and when you do charge it. At rank one, this ability does 80 damage. And then at max rank, it does 280 damage with physical power scaling. If you charge it to max tide, you get an additional 30% scaling. That is mad. The slow at max tide is 40% and I think it's roughly about 30% if you're firing it right away. The physical protect physical protection reduction is 40% using max tide and I believe it's also 30% when you're shooting it right away. Oh, then I forgot one last thing. Yeah, if you charge this to full, the duration goes from 2 seconds to 4 seconds. So, you know, yay. Whirlpool form, Kribitz's third ability. Kribitus dives into the ground, becoming the Maw. Or, you know, this giant sea vagina. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> Anyways, Fuchi dives in and she's in that form. She's doing damage. She is doing damage on the Wii out. And she is getting movement speed boost when she is down there. Additionally, this is your second ability that can be buffed with your passive tide meter. You can jump into the ground and reactivate it again, increasing the movement speed. And when the ability ends, if anyone is still in the radius of the ability, it knocks them away. Let's quickly show that again. I didn't have enough tide. One second. Air game. Knocks them away. Oh, what am I doing? Now, this ability is BS. This ability doesn't care about what you love, what you want to do, who you're trying to stop. It doesn't matter. Because there's one more thing it does. When you're in the ground like that, you're a CC immune and you don't take damage. So here's some clips of the bullshit that you can accomplish with this ability. Got that pesky Ares trying to chain you up? No problems. So go underneath that. Negate that shit. Ymir puts a wall up. No problem. Right underneath that as well. Now go away. Go away. There. Simple. Easy. It's done. It's done. It's 
all I fucking wanted. It took six fucking minutes. You can also dodge high damage ultimates with this ability, such as a Vulcan ult and a raw ult. Thank you. No fucking turret! <laughs> Last but not least, the Maw Hungers, Kribus's ultimate. This ability is pretty straightforward. It's pretty much a Scylla ult with... No, it really, it's just a Scylla ult. So when you ult, you gain movement speed and your CC immune. You push enemies back, pushing them to the end of the ability's range, executing them if they're low enough health, or stunning them if they're not in the executionable range. That Neef had a tiff with me. I'm sorry, baby girl. Go back. My webcam decided to die. So we are going to continue the rest of this video without seeing my beautiful mug. We're going to go into ability leveling order and what abilities to max and in what order and my reasons for it. I like to start by putting a point and then maxing your first ability first. I find that the extra damage to minions and the extra wave clear is really nice to get ahead, get some early EXP and to make sure that the wave and your enemies don't push up towards you. And no surprise, second ability is your second uh, ranked ability that you're going to rank to max finishing with your ultimate last and your escape as third pretty straightforward pretty simple that's really all there is when it comes to leveling order now as for your combo start by opening up with your two applying the debuff getting some autos in activating your one hitting them if you really feel like it, you can try to add your escape in there at some point and apply it for more damage and to knock them away. I really wouldn't do that. I would just keep it real simple, real easy. Make sure your tide is actually full for this. I'm going to quickly do that here. There we go. So, realistically, start with your two, applying the debuff. Activate your one, start getting autos in. If they're low enough or simply you want to stun them so they stop running away, alt, push them back, stunning them and continue your assault. Now, if you do kill them or they're pretty low and you want to get them, but their allies have showed up, you can try to get the kill with your escape. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just take the loss and leave, but you can definitely try. And well, th that's just about it when it comes to Kribdis and her combos. I don't think there really is much flexibility in that realm. That's just kind of what you do with this character. Now for tips, I would say you need to learn when is the best time to be applying the debuff at max charge because it does take a couple seconds. It's not too long. If you're in a 1v1 situation, I think the best thing to do is just to get that out and start wailing on your opponent because the debuff is still pretty significant without the amplification. So learning when to fully charge your two and when not to is very key. Next thing to note is that you can rem always remember with your escape, it's bullshit, and you can pretty much use it to get out of any like super bad situation. But don't hold on to it for, for way too long. Know when to get out, when know when to pull out, because this isn't just you know a get out of jail free card. People will continue to walk down with you down the lane, and if you're nowhere near a tower or teammates, as soon as you come up, that's it, you're dead meat. And that sums up my comprehensive and quick guide for Charybdis. If you liked the video, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and sticking around, and I'll catch you in my next God Guide. Bye!